Canada has one of the highest rates of irritable bowel syndrome in the world. At least 5 million Canadians are living with it. So here to help us understand what IBS is and how to treat it is Dr. Chris Andrews, the director of the Centre for Digestive Motility at the University of Calgary. Good morning to you, Dr. Hi, Andrews. Yeah. Thank you for having being me. here. Thank you. So why don't we just start off with the definition, as I like to do, to put this all in context. What exactly is IBS? So IBS stands for irritable bowel syndrome, and, and it's a problem, it's a disorder of the nerves of the gut. Where the nerves get sensitized or hyperactive for some way, for some reason, and it leads to two things. It leads to a lot of discomfort or pain mm -hmm. uh, in the gut, and it also leads to altered bowel habits, okay. meaning either diarrhea or constipation or alternating between them. Right. Yeah. So these are really debilitating symptoms. They can really affect quality of life. They can be very severe. I mean, uh, it's, it's very common disorder, um, and the severity can be quite can range quite a lot. Some people have mild symptoms. Uh, some people can be quite debilitated by them. Right, right. Yeah. So do, it's so pervasive. I was saying 5 million Canadians, and yet we don't really know why it's so pervasive, do we? We don't know why. I mean, it is, I, Canada has one of the highest rates of IBS in the world, and, mm -hmm. and it's very, been very well studied here. Um, but we don't know why, and I think that um, um, that's something that we're, we're working on to of understand course. why that is. But of course. It is Does that make it more challenging to treat? Well, you know, it, it, the problem with it is the, the symptoms are really based, or the, the diagnosis is based on symptoms. Right. And so um, the symptoms can vary very much between different people. And so sure. sometimes it's hard to actually clinch the diagnosis. Right, right. That's probably one of the most difficult things. Um, but also the, the symptoms can change over time in the same person. Sure. And so um, they may have a pain with diarrhea uh, for years and years, and then over time it can switch into more constipation. So it, that can be very hard to know, is this still IBS or is this something new? It's something else, right. Yeah. Wonderful. So people, as we know, so, so common, what can they do to get some relief? Well, I, I think the first thing is, is um, being given the diagnosis and accepting right. that they have it. You know, okay. sometimes, you know, if people have a lot of pain and discomfort and th they don't know what's going on and they see a doctor and the doctor also doesn't know what's going on, right. then that can be very worrisome. And so people often worry that they have cancer or right. something bad. Yes. But once, once the diagnosis is established, then um, the main thing is to, um, uh, to accept it. Okay. And um, uh, then, then there's a number of treatments that you can try. And often many people find that um, just understanding that they have IBS lets them cope Calms with it a lot a better. Yeah. Um, but then you can also look at dietary changes, sure. um, probiotics and supplements, or even medications, uh, depending on how bad their symptoms are. Yeah. What about diet? Because the FODMAP diet often comes up in relation to IBS. What's that? For sure. So FODMAP diet is, is a diet that's, um, that cuts out a lot of sugars and sh carbohydrates, short-chain carbohydrates. And it's... Um, it, a lot of those uh, molecules are very poorly processed by the body and they can often lead to a lot of gas and diarrhea. And so it's a test diet where you take all those foods out for about right. four to six weeks and see if you feel better. And if you do, then you slowly reintroduce them one at a time. Okay. So people can try and do that on their own, sure. although it's a, bit, a little bit complex. And so often is, we recommend yeah. that people see me, a dietitian to help with that okay. um, if Wonderful. necessary. But that is a route to getting some kind. That is one route. Another route that a lot of people try is going gluten-free. Right. Gluten-free is very popular these of days. Of course it is, imagine. yeah. And Lots of options out there, though. There, there is. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, it seems that uh, we get a lot of carbohydrates in, in, our, in, our, um, in our diet, and so going mm -hmm. lower carb often can help. Sometimes increasing fiber and, and cutting out pop and caffeine and those sort of things can also be very helpful. Can also yeah. help. Okay. Yeah. Now, as you said, there's a lot of research underway, and there's some research happening right here in Calgary. Can you tell me quickly about some of the research sure. underway? Sure. Well, we have a number of studies, actually, some with okay. new drug uh, medications that are coming to market, um, some other supplements. But uh, the big project I, I want to mention is called the Imagine Project, and this is, this is a, a, all across Canada, a very large um, Canadian-funded uh, study looking at the microbiome or the stool flora, the bacteria in your gut, and how that might relate to IBS and, and whether they, it's different between people with IBS and people without it, and to just track that and see how it changes with treatments and with time. So it's a very big study, very interesting study, and we'll actually be recruiting a lot of patients with IBS for that in the coming Wonderful. years. Yeah. So if people are willing to participate, have you got a website you want to plug? We do, sure. The CDHF.ca. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Wonderful. It, yeah. I always say if you want good treatment, try to get into a clinical trial. That's there it. you go. That's Thank it. you so much for That's being here. Thanks for having here. me, Leah. That's great information.